What's up everybody, it's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Sky Reports. Today I bring you an anime review of Joker Game, episode two. Now right off the bat, a huge part of this episode, or about a quarter of the episode was recap. If you take the beginning, which was the retelling of who the each agency are, a look back at the situation that Sakama is in right now, and the opening, you probably chew through about four minutes and 30 seconds of a roughly 20 minute episode. So with that being said, a majority of it was recap, but the rest of the episode that we did get was very info heavy. And when I talk about info dump, I mean like psychopaths info dump. Like you almost have to watch this episode twice to get everything. So on that note, let's just go ahead and get to the recap. So again, we start back off with Sakama and Mayoshi is there disguised as military police to investigate John Gordon who was an American spy and they were in the point of searching his home and trying to find a document but however it seems like that was going to be a failure because the military police was revealed by John Gordon to already have been there a few days prior so it was nothing for them to find or so we think and Sakamo is getting ready to own up to committing suicide at this point because that was a promise that if they didn't find anything that he would kill himself. He goes back and he starts to recall the things that Lieutenant Colonel Yuki was telling them, such as a spy killing himself is the worst thing that they can do or to try to kill others. Their job is to get in and out as cleanly as possible, as discreet as possible. We also get a look back at the dialogue that Mayoshi said as well that with enough faith in something, people will worship a sardine head. See, this is where a little bit of history comes in because the Japanese are real religious and they hold certain idols and things like that to a high regard, especially in this era. And that leads to a big point, as Yuki was saying, a job of a spy is to be invisible. Invisible people, invisible places. And something snaps within Sakama at this point as he noticed that Gordon was worshiping something that looks like it was just a regular picture. That's where the plot thickens. You see, what they were looking for was hidden behind an imperial portrait that was inside of the house. And Sakama orders Mayoshi to go ahead and get that idol. No one else moved on it, but remember, these guys are spies. They're only loyal to their mission. They're not loyal to any type of religion. A regular military police person wouldn't dare go in and touch this imperial portrait because it's sacred. As you've seen, none of the other guards moved as well. It was only the Mayoshi who was part of the D agency, and once again, they're only loyal to their mission. So, crisis averted. Sakama didn't have to kill himself, and we found out where the cipher was. It was within John Gordon's home behind the imperial portrait. Again, something that's sacred held to Japanese, so they wouldn't have touched it in any other situation. But we still have a few questions here, as even Sakama goes back to Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Yuki and questions if he knew that the soldiers that appeared before them was there all along. He doesn't respond to Sakama, but he does give him a sly smirk as he's looking into the window. Come on, bro, these are spies. This is what they do. They're mind games. They run mind games. They're always in the know. And again, they're going to be invisible and get in and out. Sakama's really going to have to learn how to get with this program or he's going to get left in the dust really soon trying to play this Joker game, as they call it. Something else that happened as well was he also recalled the dialogue that Lieutenant, Luke, Lieutenant Yuki was mentioning. I forgot to mention this in my last episode. Is that the Americans did the exact same thing or the metaphor of the Joker game to the Japanese on the cusp of this war, which caused everything. Everybody in the American government kind of transpired around and aligned themselves against Japan to draw them out, making them the victims of it all. So that was another thing that he can remember as Sakama's eyes are beginning to open to how corrupt a government can be because he's a real stand-up person. He was the type of person that he, even he said in the last episode that he would give his life for a government. But what happens when you start to see a little bit of taint in that government? And you start questioning that faith in it yourself. So with that being said, he leaves Yuki's office and he's also greeted by Mayoshi who gives him actually a little bit of props for being able to figure out that Gordon was hiding something all along. And he once again extends his hand to ask him to go out with them again for some drinks on town. 
Sakama still refuses, but this time it's more of a respectfully refused as he just says, no thanks, I'll join you guys next time. His order of business is going to his commanding officer and figuring out what went wrong to begin with because who sent the order to send these guys out at first? As the plot thickens, he also wants to know how did Yuki even know that the spies were, the, not the, that the original government was there before them. How this all worked, how did he get that intel? See, this is where the plot thickens and this is where a lot of info dumping in the episode comes in because we come to find out that Muto visited a geisha house and got stupid drunk, basically. And in his drunken stupor, he was giving out his intel. Now, Yuki happened to be at that same geisha house at the same time because he was telling Muto the entire time. And Muto dropped his cigarette case, which is a plot point later on in the episode, and pretty much he got two birds and one stone because now he has evidence to blackmail Muto with as well as the intel that he needs. So Sakama shows the cigarette case to Muto and basically asks, what were you doing in this type of place? And he pretty much just flies off the handle like you're just a liaison. All you're supposed to do is just go and escort these guys to come back. You have no right to question me. But when you're dealing with someone trying to cover up a mistake on his own, see what happened was when Muto sent his soldiers out at first, they didn't find anything at all because again, they were respectful Japanese troops. So they wasn't gonna bother to check the idol. But, so his reputation was online at this point. He couldn't come back empty handed. His plan all along was to set up the D agency to take the fall. So he still looks good in the interim. But the tables were turned on him because not only is Yuki using Muto and gonna blackmail Muto with this information to fund the D agency, he also gets a little bit of egg on his face as well. Because if they expose that this guy blurted out this type of information, especially top secret government information, not only would he get fired, you know, back in those days, they pretty gutter. He probably would have died or something. So he tried to step on the D agency in order to make himself look better. We also find out that Sakama got a little bit of detective skills in him as well. He was able to find out that Yuki is faking walking with a cane and limping, and he actually has a fake hand. See, the cigarette case that Mudo dropped and Sakama was able to retrieve and use as leverage, he found out the only fingerprints that was on it was his own fingerprints, Mudo's fingerprints, and the geisha. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing, but if Yuki had possession of the cigarette case, like he said, why wasn't there any fingerprints on it? That's because he had a fake hand. And at the time, he couldn't grab it with the hand that would have had the fingerprints on it because he was holding the geisha at the time. So he had to play it off. He had to grab it with the fake hand. And Saikama was able to figure that out. So with that being said, he confronts Yuki about this. And at that point, Yuki is very impressed with Saikama's skills as well as Mayoshi. And he offers him a position to take the training to be in the D agency. And we're not giving a complete answer right away at the end of the episode, but Saikama does mention that he no longer wants to be a pawn of the government who's expendable because Muto pretty much used him to his leisure and he really didn't care if he would have lived or died or what would have happened as long as his name was tainted. So that was the episode in a nutshell. Again, a majority of it was recap from last episode going back to the last quarter of what happened. And then the rest was a bunch of info dumping and I pretty much just went over the reveals that we got in this one. It's, it's kind of like Psychopaths, just like I keep saying. You might have to watch it more than once to get everything, but that was pretty much the gist as now we are beginning to move a little bit forward. We got a little bit of characterization for Mayoshi, Sakama, and a little bit for Yuki as well. And we're also going to see Sakama embark on being a D-Agent. I mean, come on, it's obvious at this point. He's not going to continue to be a government li liaison or the story will go nowhere. And also, he feels betrayed by the government that he was going to give his life for. So it's better to go with the devil you know at this point, which is the D-Agency. Because even though he doesn't exactly agree with the way spies do their methods, they're coming out a little bit cleaner than what he thought he was working for. So that was it on the episode. And um, thank you very much for watching as always. If you liked anything I said in the video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's a crazy spring 2016 season. So it's pretty much something coming out almost every day as I'll continue to update as I can. So be back here tomorrow as I review Bungo Stray Dogs. And that's it for the Scott Report. It's your boy Infrared with the Scott Report signing out.
See you soon.